Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're gonna get the mostly 3D printed CNC wired up and up and running. So some new stuff that I got going on here is we got some cable chains, some wire sheathing, and I've 3D printed an enclosure for the controller and a LCD screen. I've got an emergency shutoff button here. I need to uh, 3D print an enclosure for that and mount it on here also. So I'm currently 3D printing the mounts for the cable chain. Uh, one of the things that I didn't realize when I bought this cable chain is that I might not have enough room underneath here, especially on this lower side here. So I think what I'm gonna do is mount it on the sides. So that way you don't have to worry about trying to fit that underneath the rail. I've got this aluminum angle that's gonna go down the middle and these 3D printed mounts here. So that's gonna support the cable chain that runs down that axis. All the mounts for the cable chain I've had to kind of modify from existing Thingiverse files that I found online. So if you're interested in obtaining these files, uh, let me know in the comments and I can post it in the description. All right, so I've got my cable chain all mounted and I'm ready to start wiring everything up. Printed this little enclosure for the emergency stop button. Probably gonna mount that somewhere right here. I bought a little 40 millimeter fan that will mount inside the case for the uh, screen and the control board, just to kind of make sure everything stays cool in there. And we're gonna wrap all the wiring with this wire sheathing just to make sure it's all protected. So let's go ahead and get this thing wired up.
everything's wired up. Got it all nice and tidy. The only thing that looks a little messy right now is I've got this kind of tail of wires that's extra. I'm gonna keep that in case I ever decide to make the machine a little bit bigger. But for now, I'll just leave it like this and I'll get some bigger zip ties and kind of get it out of the way. So let's start it up and make sure all the motors move in the right direction. So first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that all my axes move in the right direction and I didn't get any of the plugs plugged in uh, opposite. So we're going to move the x-axis. Looks good. And Z positive is supposed to make the uh, Z axis go up, Z negative is toward the workpiece, so. Looks good. All right, now I'm just gonna draw a little picture here with the pin I've mounted instead of a spindle. And that's just gonna help me determine whether my machine is square and make sure that I know exactly how to use the G code for this thing. Alright, so the first test is complete, came out pretty good. Where it started and finished is at the exact same point and all the proportions and dimensions are all correct. So I must have built this thing pretty square. So next up, I'm going to actually mount the spindle and start cutting some real material with that. And don't worry, I'm not going to actually cut anything inside my office here. As soon as I get my garage built, I can actually mount the spindle to the machine and start cutting some materials such as like foam and soft woods and then kind of slowly work up to aluminum. I got a comment on the last video asking how much the total cost of the machine was. So the kit itself was about $350. The printed parts were about another $50 in uh, filament. The conduit cable chain and the aluminum angle that was probably all about another fifty dollars and then my spindle was another fifty i went with the uh, dewalt 660. so the total itself comes out to be about five hundred dollars but that doesn't include the wood that i had to buy for the table i think that came out to be about fifty uh, with prices being pretty high right now during covid all in all about 550 for the total table and machine which is not terribly bad considering how most machines that are capable of cutting aluminum are upwards of $1,500. So I'm pretty happy with that. As long as it uh, actually works out to cut aluminum in the future, I will be ecstatic with how much I've spent on this. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully in the next episode, I'll be in my new well-lit garage and we can start building some parts for the Miata. Thanks for watching.